So how difficult it is actually to get a fellowship? I'm pretty sure that most of, most of us would be thinking that it is, it is much difficult than having a post-graduation seat. But we are over here to tell you that no, it is not so difficult if you are aware of the opportunities that are available today. So why spine exactly? A lot many centers in India during your residency, you have exposure to spine. But a lot many centers still don't do. So your inclination might develop during your undergraduation or during your residency. And you have to identify that very early. Definitely there are challenges because the training programs are quite new. You need patience. Spine surgery as such is rewarding if you choose your patients well. And if you're a technology nerd, that uh, the advances that are going to happen in the near future are immense. So what has been our fellowship experience? So I have been lucky to be trained during my residency at Sancheti Hospital, which had, uh, which had a separate spine unit. And that is where the seeds were sown in, into my mind that I want to pursue spine as a speciality. And then I gave my ASSI exams and uh, was selected under Dr. Vishal Kundani, sir, for uh, the ASSI fellowship, which was a long-term fellowship for two years. And then I went abroad. So it is very much necessary to have an Indian fellowship before uh, venturing abroad. And the abroad fellowships should be a mixed bag. It should be uh, a long-term fellowship combined with an observership of short terms. And that is what happened in my case. So similarly, as, as like Samir, I also had my seeds of spine and inclination towards that. In my residency, I had two mentors who were very good spine surgeons. So during my residency, I, real, I realized that if I need to apply and become a spine surgeon, I need to be aware of what are the opportunities. So during my residency, I was a member of the AO spine, I was a member of the ASSI, and I was a corporate member of the IO as well. And as said by Dr. Kenny sir as well and others, because you have to have memberships. If you don't have memberships, your scope of becoming a spine surgeon are quite less. So based upon that membership and my early CV during which we had done publications and case reports, I got early selection into the AO spine immediately after my residency. That was a plus sign. During that time, I realized I am I'm made for spine and I prepared for the ASI entrance as well. I gave my ASI entrance immediately after my AO spine fellowship. I went into Bombay Hospital. Then during the ASI fellowship, I started preparing for my next two years plans. And that is where I'm becoming a member of societies like CCOD, APSS, and other societies for spine comes into play. During the end of the fellowship, I already had four fellowships which are lined up. And the good thing about international fellowships is that they usually give you a one-year period wherein you can plan your schedule, okay? You can coordinate with your center and then you can plan everything in one go. So after that, I went to AO Spine Center in NHS Nottingham, then a pediatric deformity center in Netherlands, then a spine tumor center in Denmark. This was all in one go. After that, I realized I need to start practice. I went back into practice. And then in that time period, I realized I need to learn endoscopy as well. So I applied to endoscopy center, and then finally the SRS award fellowship. So basically there are multiple different types of fellowships which are available, and each having its pros and cons. So it is very much necessary to have your basic training in India itself, because that is what you are actually going to practice in long term. So it should be a long term fellowship, coupled with international fellowships, which may be long term or short term, Preferably a clinical fellowship rather than an observership so that you can have a hands-on experience and learn the new technique. And it also prepares us for the things, the advances in the particular field that are going to come in future. Similarly, the certified fellowships are better rather than the uncertified fellowships. They are preferred. Clinical fellowships are better than the research-oriented fellowships. Similarly, short-term observerships. If you know, have a basic knowledge of that particular field, then you can go for a short term, observe and come back. But if you want to learn the technique, you want to implement it, then yes, long term fellowships are necessary. And there are multiple sponsored, paid and self-funded fellowships for which the organizations, as mentioned before, help us. So when to start? You have to start early, probably yesterday, if not today. Open up, pull out your phones and read about all the societies that are there, try to apply as many and invest time as well as money in that because that will be the base for your future endeavors. So there are spine fellowship, uh, spine societies which are either ortho or neuro. You have to follow them on social media, on their websites, register to their news newsletters, become members and try and follow the events as well if they're happening in, their, in your local uh, city. Identify the leaders, identify the spine centers which you want to relate to and then be in touch with them. 
be a part of the spine academics team of your government medical college or, or residency, do case reports at least, because case reports are the ones which will get easily published and that will give you a plus point in your CV. Try and have some series, and if you're really interested in spine, take up a thesis of spine, okay? Do presentation and posters in your local bodies, local societies, and then add that into your CV. Prepare for the entrance exams. So the two main entrance exams right now are FNB and ASSI. You have enough uh, opportunities there, and they are quite easy as well, to be very frank and you have to have recommendations. If you don't have recommendations, some, some, somewhere uh, or the other, you, your CV might uh, be, be a bit short, so try to have recommendations from the regional spine centers. So how long to train? As, as with any other specialty, it has a long learning curve. We recommend at least two years at a center, learn all everything, and then add observerships. Local first, and then only international. Keep adding subdomains after your training is done or during your early practice, and try and target the sponsor fellowship first because that is where the whole rush is. So what are the opportunities in real for spine? There are many societies and the most important society in India is the ASSI followed by the AO Spine which is an international body, the APSS which is the Asia Pacific Spine Society, the SRS which is a body of the uh, deformity surgeons, the North American Spine Society, CCOT, there are FNB centers, major spine centers like Ganga, Stavya, individual surgeons who are quite big and you can get good hands on with them. MUHS fellowships, ISSE, international centers like Singapore, UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Japan. You can have a list and you can turn, follow them and be in touch on email, even during your later residency or during your bond period. Try structuring the spine training, okay? It, a mix of centers is most important. A single center might not be able to give you everything what you want to learn in spine, so at least visit a couple of centers, maybe be it for a week or a month and apply at every opportunity. Application doesn't cost anything. If you apply 10 places, you might get a reply from four and you might end up getting one. So this is the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you, Samir and Ankit for bringing out this thing. But a uh, few things that I would like to bring to you that if you want to become a spine surgeon who's going to practice in India, I think the first thing that where to start is start in India. Not only for the reason that the number of seats have dramatically increased in the last five years, Today, we have at least 150 spine fellowship positions every year in India itself. And they are not lousy fellowships. Don't think that they are surgeon-based fellowship programs. They are all institute-based uh, fellowship programs. In Bombay itself, we have 25 spine fellowships happening at reputed centers, Bombay Hospital, Leelawati Hospital, HN Hospital, KEM Hospital for that matter, and so on and on. Plus, there are many, many more reputed centers in the country like ISIC in Delhi, Sh uh, Shankar, uh, Dr. Shankar Acharya has it in Ganga Hospital, we have it in Apollo Chennai, we have it in Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, and many more such fellowships available, including CMC Velour, Ahmedabad. So, there are institute-based fellowships available. Uh, there are Association-based fellowships available, like ASSI sponsored fellowship, they pay a decent sum of money, there is a set curriculum for training, it goes on for too long years, it takes you to research, it takes you to training, gives you plenty of hands-on opportunities and also there are central FNB seats to spine also and all in all there are 150 plus seats available, you have to get in here. So not only the number of seats are more, so you should think Swadeshi, but also two, the problems that we are going to treat in India are completely different and that is why you got to get trained in degenerative spine, in, in TB spine more, in, in infective spine more, in instabilities more, rather than scoliosis or adult scolies or craniovertebral junctions, which are specialized niche things to learn. Probably you can do it after a two or three years stint in spine surgery in India. And the third most important thing, these are difficult times. Even if you apply, even if you get selected, Two of my fellows who are present in this hall right now have already got their selections done in US and in Korea and Japan, but they can't fly, it's COVID times. So even if you get selected after you have applied to foreign fellowships, for coming two more years, don't expect that you'll get a chance to fly out there and the fight is going to get harder there. And that's why, with all these three reasons, I recommend that start today, start applying to institute-based fellowships, association-based fellowships, and also to the central FNB things. They are simpler exams, and our guys can really help you to prepare for them. And try to think of spending at least two years in India training under surgeons and institutes, and that's when you would want to start applying to any abroad fellowship in the centers that are mentioned here. With this, I would like to thank you also.